Hi YouTube, it's Kathy, and this is my weekly entertainment wrap-up for February 18th through 24th. This week I read one book, I watched one movie, I watched three shows, and I listened to one book. I'm also in a place with reasonably sized coffee cups by North American standards. If you remember back to my last video, I was in the north of France, now I'm in the south of England because we took a ferry across the channel. We're visiting family right now and I'm currently in their music slash game room. There are so many instruments in this room, not just this lovely wall behind me, but like various instruments in various states of repair. There's also a whole big stack of games. You're actually on a stack of games. And then there's also some art just tucked around in places in here because the family I'm staying with are really cool, honestly. The book I read this week is Meddling Kids. You might be able to tell just from the title what this is, but you won't get the whole picture of it until I tell you a little bit more about it. This is kind of based around a group that very much resembles the Scooby Gang. When they were all 12 or 13, they caught this one specific person who was basically just a guy in a mask scaring people off for nefarious reasons. And now we are 13 years later and he's actually getting out of prison for everything he did. That puts all the members of the Blythe Summer Detective Club at about 25 years old, except for or one of them has passed since then, and obviously the dog that was in the summer club passed some time ago as well, but he actually has a great-great-grandson who comes into the picture in this new adventure. What ends up happening is one of the members is pretty sure that the guy that went to prison for all of these things didn't actually do them, and is being called back to the area because they haven't really been there since, and wants to get the whole gang back together again to go investigating. Firstly, let me say this is full of nostalgia because even though it's not completely 100% referencing things that we all kind of know about if you're of a certain age, but it is referencing basically the fake version of those things. So there are people who are institutionalized and they're watching a television program that's pretty much Xena the Warrior Princess, but I think the titular character was called Zira, not Xena. There's also tons of really tiny references throughout, such as there was an article at one point written by somebody by the name of Nancy Hardy, aka Nancy Drew and the Hardy Boys, just smushed together as one person. And there's a river in this area that's referenced quite often called the Zoinks River. So, you know, little things like that on top of pop culture references. You could also argue that all of this gang is back together again because the character that's been institutionalized is also sometimes talking to the one that has passed because he is seeing him everywhere. So Something I really appreciated about this book is Tim, the dog in this book, has his own personality and has his own characteristics, and I really love when a book will talk about what's going on with the animal companion in the situation. It's so fun to me. This book is also ridiculously action-packed. There's some feelings that somebody's been feeling towards somebody else in the group for years now, and they've never been expressed until possibly during the course of this book. And I can tell you that the baddie in this one definitely isn't just some guy in a mask. This one is weird and wonderful, and I definitely recommend it. The one movie that we watched this week, we watched a couple of nights ago once we finally got here, and that was A Haunting in Venice. I hadn't realized that they had made another Poirot mystery with Kenneth Branagh as Poirot again. He also directed this one. I don't know if he directed the first one that they did in this series, but he directed this one, which I didn't realize until the very end. This one is based on an Agatha Christie book that I haven't read called Halloween Night. And essentially, Poirot is sort of retired. He's just hanging out in Venice. And this woman who has written a lot of books that were pretty much based on him is like, hey, I'm going to this seance tonight because I can't figure out how this woman is doing all of these things and I need to consult you, the second most intelligent person I know, because obviously I'm the first most intelligent, to see if you can see anything that I can't. It's set in this kind of broken down manner in Venice and about a year previously the daughter of the person who lives there actually died, so they're trying to see if they can contact that spirit. While they're there, some things go awry. I don't want to tell you exactly what they are, and then it becomes this locked room situation where we have to figure out who done it. I enjoyed it, however, some of the shot choices were a little bit odd and actually had us like out of the narrative going, why would you shoot it like that? There was a lot of Dutch angles from above that were a little bit weird, especially near the beginning of the film, and um, yeah, that actually took us out of what was going on. But other than that, it was really fun to figure out how this was going to go. As for the shows we watched, I know you know one of them. It was Taskmaster, and we only have three episodes left of the 16th season, and we're just kind of basically waiting on that one because there isn't a season after this. Also, last night we actually played Taskmaster the board game because our hosts have it, and it was a lot of fun. I actually just played the role of the taskmaster and one of the tasks that I gave them last night that I really enjoyed was make a tiny sandwich for the taskmaster trophy. 
tiniest sandwich wins, you have five minutes. And then they all scrambled to the kitchen and they were actually like giving up counter space and being very nice about it and making very, very tiny little sandwiches. So I was drunk with power. It was wonderful. On the ferry from France to the UK, I also watched a mini series that I had downloaded to my phone from Netflix. And that was Live to 100 Secrets of the Blue Zones. This is all about these different locations around the world that have a much higher percentage than normal of the population that actually makes it to be centenarians. So living to 100 or more. More. Essentially, the fellow in this has been studying longevity for over 20 years. He's actually done a lot of research and he's went to these different zones specifically to figure out what about these areas actually promoted people to live longer. And I thought it was really, really interesting. I'm actually considering making my own personal challenge based around what is presented in this mini series. So when I get home, maybe remind me to do that because I'm not going to do it when I'm traveling. That's just too much. Last night was Saturday, which in this house means one thing, gladiators. We watched the seventh episode of the show, the current episode of this show. This show is really fun. It's basically different competitors going up against these different gladiators. They're trying to win points so that they can get further into the competition. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of tasks that are very physically demanding, but also really fun to watch. So trying to knock each other off a high pedestal or a very high platform or running up things or climbing things, or basically just trying to get around these other competitors. It's also very cheesy in points, which I kind Kind of appreciated and it also is a little bit wholesome because you can see people are going through it. For example, there was one competitor who was petrified by heights and you could see her shaking but she was just so determined to do what she did which was just so cool to see. And then yes, there's at least one character who I'm pretty sure is just supposed to be a jerk but everybody else was just so lovely. The book that I listened to this week is The Last Housewife. This one is about a woman named Shay. She's been married for about a year and about six months ago she actually quit her reporting job to actually work on her novel, but that's not going well. She basically hasn't written a thing. One day she's sitting down to listen to her favorite true crime podcast, when all of a sudden that's how she finds out how her college roommate has just died and it might have been murder. Even more interestingly is the person who hosts this podcast was actually a childhood friend of hers. Without thinking too much of it, she's suddenly on a plane back to New York to figure out what happened to her college friend and then also is probably going to have to talk to her childhood friend as well so they can team up and figure it out. This, however, brings up some traumatic things that happened in her past. This one is a pretty dark one, a pretty interesting one. If you want to read something that has to do with people who may or may not have been in a cult and may or may not have survived that, this is definitely one to pick up. It gets deep and dark and I really love that there were some sections that were just the raw audio files of interviews. That was a really good vehicle to get out these stories. That's it for this week. If you've read, watched, or listened to any of these, let me know about it down in the comments below. On the way down to the comments, if you hit that subscribe button, that would be very nice of you. If you don't feel like leaving a comment, but want to make sure that I know you were here, just leave an emoji or a smiley face if you happen to be on your keyboard. Some people have asked if there's a way to financially support this channel, so I set up a Ko-fi account, which is a digital tipping service. The link for that, as always, is down below. You can like and share this as you see fit, and I will see you very soon. Bye!